Good morning, everyone, and thank you for connecting to this webinar in which we we'll present the new line of biomaterial that uh, Tissue has developed uh, for CTEC and together CTEC, as John has already mentioned. Uh, Tissue is a company founded in uh, 2017 and located in Domagnano in San Marino Republic, uh, which, develops, uh, which develops uh, and produces biomaterials and medical devices for regenerative main medicine, mainly in uh, orthopedics, traumatology and spinal surgery. Uh, we are, of course, a very young company, but, uh, but as uh, already uh, told by John, uh, the founder have been working in the field of biomaterials and tissue regeneration for over than 25 years. <clears throat> so we have a bit of experience uh, at the moment. And um, in uh, 2020, we entered the dentistry market, uh, developing for CTEC a complete line of uh, bone regeneration uh, that uh, is called Century GTR. Uh, as tall tissue is focused on uh, regenerative medicine, um, but what is exactly uh, regenerative medicine? Uh, in, in very simple words, uh, we may say that uh, regenerative medicine is a discipline uh, dedicated um, to tissue regeneration uh, that uses external resources uh, to improve or to increase the natural capability of our body uh, to repair in presence of a tissue damage or a tissue deficit. Uh, in the background, uh, I put a, a picture of what uh, has recently become the symbol of the regeneration. Uh, this very nice animal is called uh, axolotl, and um, it owns to the salamander family, and it lives uh, uh, its entire life uh, in the larval phase. And it has been discovered that it has uh, ex the extraordinary feature of being able to regenerate not only the tail or its leg like uh, the lizards, for example, but is able to regenerate also uh, part of his brain and even the lens of the eyes. Uh, and since its genetic code uh, was completely sequenced in 2017, uh, many steps uh, forward have been made in regenerative medicine. Uh, we first hear about the regenerative medicine in the early 90s. Um, I put a picture of a very famous doctor on the left side of the screen, Michael Lysat, founder and director of uh, uh, the Brown University Center for Biomedical Engineering in Rhode Island, uh, was among the first uh, to mention exactly this term, regenerative medicine, uh, in an article addressed to his hospital administration, uh, a paragraph on future technologies that would have an impact uh, on hospitals uh, is entitled exactly regenerative medicine. And in his article, he wrote, a new branch of medicine will develop that attempts to change the course of chronic disease and in many instances will regenerate tired and failing organ. Uh, these are the years in which another very important discipline uh, has been developed. In 93, two of the most important researchers, uh, Langer and Vacanti, published a very fundamental book uh, titled Principle of Tissue Engineering, in which they proposed the, the new concept at that time, of course, uh, um, to create uh, in the laboratory artificial organs and tissues through the use of three fundamental elements, cells, scaffolds, uh, what we call now biomaterial, and physiologically active substances that we now uh, call, uh, of course, growth factors. Uh, it is the 90s, uh, um, therefore, uh, that marked the beginning of this uh, incredible journey in search of uh, techniques and technologies capable of uh, stimulating tissue regeneration. Uh, but the problem of regeneration in biology has been known since ancient times. And man has dreamed uh, of being able to regenerate or to replace non-functioning parts of uh, one's body uh, since the beginning of the, the first civilization. Uh, you all remember for sure uh, the myth of uh, Prometheus, uh, who stole fire from the gods. Uh, 
during the day, an eagle devours his liver, um, but, but during the night, the liver regenerates. So this morning, the torture can continue forever. Uh, but beyond the myths, uh, we already find the first scientific observation uh, by Empedocle, for example, in the fifth century before Christ, or a saint later by Aristotle uh, himself by simply observing uh, a tail of a lizard that grows back. And equally old is uh, the idea of repairing or replacing missing or damaged parts of one's body with some other element. So man thinks of prosthesis and biomaterial. And uh, here below, uh, you may see one of the most uh, fascinating examples of functional prosthesis. Uh, it's a big toe prosthesis made in wood and leather, uh, discovered in a tomb in Tibis, and it is dated uh, around 1,000 years before uh, uh, Christ. So it's a 3,000 years old. And this prosthesis was not uh, an aesthetic one, but for sure it helped this lady walking. Uh, on the right side, it's the very uh, famous miracle of Cosma and Damiano, two medical saints. Uh, they lived around the third century uh, after Christ, of course, and uh, were said to have transplanted the leg of an Ethiopian on a Christian guy uh, who had lost it. Uh, there is not historical proof uh, to confirm it, of course, but it is just to give you some example on how old is the idea to regenerate or at least to repair and restore parts of our body. And, uh, and this idea has involved uh, many different uh, medical areas, uh, all the different medical areas and, and also uh, the dental sector. Uh, here you see some very ancient example of dental prosthesis. In the first picture, um, a canine tied uh, to two incisors with a golden thread is a very first example of, of, of what we call today a uh, dental bridge. And uh, in the other picture, you may see a Phoenician dental prosthesis, uh, some shells held together again with a gold thread. And it is very interesting, uh, they used gold probably because they already knew it avoid or reduce uh, possible uh, infection. But even more interesting is this mandible I, I'm showing now. It is dated around the 6th century and it has been found in Honduras. And uh, you can see on this mandible three shells implanted in the bone. Um, and um, in the circle, inside the red circle, you see also the sign of the bone integration. And uh, that means that this man was able to chew uh, with these shells. Uh, why, shell, uh, why did shells integrate uh, so well with the underlying bone? Uh, the answer is simple uh, and is due to the shell composition. Shells are composed of uh, calcium carbonate, that is a, a mineral representing uh, a, a big part of our inorganic bone matrix, about 12%. And therefore, it's an element that our bone cells recognize as natural and are able to synthesize new tissue on, on it. Um, not all uh, tissues have uh, the same ability to repair or to regenerate in presence of, of a defect. And some tissue have uh, more uh, difficulties, for example, cartilage, you, you all know about it, uh, due to the lack of oxygen or inflammatory conditions or due to the complexity of their structure. Uh, the bone, fortunately, has quite good capability to, to regenerate uh, thanks to its good vascularization. But uh, bone regeneration can only take place uh, um, if all the, the elements of uh, the so-called diamond concept are present. Uh, these elements are an osteoconductive scaffold, again, the, the fundamental biomaterial to completely fill the space, the area in which we want to, to bond, uh, the bond to, to regrow. Uh, progenitor cells, so some cells, growth factors. Uh, it is very important then to have a suitable mechanical environment and the present as told of a good vascularization. 
and uh, consider furthermore that in some districts, such as the oral cavity or in spine surgery as well, uh, bone regeneration is made uh, even more difficult by the contiguity of the bone uh, with the mucosa, um, which is a tissue that has uh, the ability to regrow much more quickly uh, than the bone and therefore can occupy the area we want to preserve for the formation of new bone. And it is exactly to prevent this from happening that in the 90s, a surgical technique called guided tissue regeneration, GTR, was developed. Uh, the idea was to use uh, a membrane as a barrier to protect the bone from soft tissue infiltration and then promoting uh, bone regeneration. Uh, GTR, guided tissue regeneration, or more specifically GBR, when we speak about uh, the bone tissue, is achieved only if we are able to prevent the entrance of non-osteogenic cell uh, into the bone site. This is very, very important. Um, it, is, uh, it has been estimated that uh, a very high percentage, about 40% uh, of uh, the implants, require a GBR uh, procedure for their placement. Uh, several studies have reported similar survival rates between implants placed in bone site increased by GBR and placed in an uncontaminated site. And this means that the GBR technique is able to restore a bone tissue with uh, physiological correct uh, features. So let's start talking in detail uh, about the St. Louis GTR line of biomaterial for GTR by CTEC uh, that is composed of a complete range of synthetic bone substitutes and collagen membrane, uh, C bone and C membrane. Speaking about the C bone line, we must uh, first of all consider uh, that the mineral component that represent about 70% uh, of the entire bone tissue is mainly composed of uh, calcium phosphate, about 86% of the total mineral components. And uh, this uh, calcium phosphate is in the form of uh, hydroxyapatite nanocrystal uh, with a size of about 50 nanometers. So it is composed from very, very small uh, crystalline structure. <clears throat> and uh, mm, sorry, uh, and nano uh, structure uh, hydroxyapatites uh, is exactly what, what we try to replicate with the C bone that has uh, exactly the same structures and the same dimension. So we say that C bone is a biomimetic nanostructure hydroxyapatite. Uh, nanostructure means that also uh, the crystal is composed by uh, a very, very small size, even uh, smaller than 50 microns. And biomimetics uh, stays, uh, means that uh, C bone hydroxyapatite uh, has a very high similarity in size, uh, crystal structure, and chemical composition uh, to the natural hydroxyapatite in our bone. Uh, if we give a look to uh, some, some picture, uh, you may see that the structure of C bone uh, present a very high porosity level. And we can identify three different uh, porosity levels depending on the size of the pores. Uh, we speak about uh, macro porosity when, uh, uh, when the pores uh, have a dimension uh, between 200 and 500 microns. Uh, we say, uh, we speak about micro porosity with pores of two or three microns. And lastly, we speak about nano porosity with pores between 40 and 80 nanometers. So it means that uh, uh, about 80% of the granules uh, present uh, egg porosity. Uh, the most important feature of uh, C bonds are for sure the total biocompatibility, uh, no toxicity or inflammation because it's 100% a natural mineral. 
it also present uh, uh, nanocrystal uh, hydroxypatite smaller than 50 nanometers as told and uh, due to this of uh, its crystal we have a very high surface volume ratio and a very high surface activity uh, due to its chemical composition that is exactly the same uh, to the natural hydroxypatite it chemically binds to bone and stimulates uh, the, the growth, the, the growth of tissue uh, through a direct action on osteoblast. That is very important. And uh, this fissure uh, allows for very important in situ activity once we implant the material. And therefore, C bone is able to uh, promote rapid bone regeneration and early vascularization thanks to its osteoconductive and osteostimulating properties. Uh, it encourages protein absorption and osteoblast adhesion. It improves the function of osteoblast and it is completely degradable by osteoclast activity. And finally, it is replaced by newly formed bone during the healing process. And these uh, capabilities have been demonstrated also in uh, an in vivo study we conduced for C-bone certification. We implanted our hydroxypatite uh, injectable paste into a tibial defect uh, in rabbit. And uh, uh, the histology you see uh, on the left side of the screen at 12 weeks, that is equivalent to about uh, six months in human, showed a uh, mark bone regeneration we did then an overgrowth into the subcutis there were no residue of the grafter material and a complete remodeled bone tissue was observed uh, the very small lacuna the very small lacuna you may see here close to the arrow uh, means that the the new bone uh, form was very very dense because we have very very small uh, species inside the, the new uh, bone tissue matrix And if we compare, and if we compare the, um, this bone regeneration to the histology of the negative control, a bone defect on the other tibial bone of the same rabbit with no implantation of anything, uh, we observe very small bone tissue formation and very large lacuna filled of uh, fat and uh, fibrous tissue. You may see here, this is fat and these are some fibrotic tissue. And this is the proof that C-bone is not only a, a good scaffold, a good biomaterial, so a passive structure, but is also able to directly stimulate bone formation. This is the reason because we have also here an overgrowth of bone tissue. So we have more tissue than desired that is very bone and in oral uh, bone regeneration. C-bone uh, is available in uh, four different formats. Uh, to give you a very complete range of material uh, that make easier the different uh, uh, utilization depending on specification. We have uh, dense granules. We also have porous chips, uh, injectable paste, and the so-called moldable cramps, so a kind of uh, malleable paste. Uh, dense granules format uh, with a granulometry of about uh, 500 to 1000 microns uh, consists of uh, micrometric aggregates of regular spherical granules. Uh, their high density uh, makes them degradable in a longer time compared to the porous chips uh, I'll present uh, later on. And we can think to this uh, dense granule like a kind of cortical bone. Dense granules are available in different volume from 0.5 cc to 4 cc in single or multiple packaging of six vials uh, per box. Uh, these granules are also available uh, with a bigger granulometry, one to two millimeter for bigger defect in a volume of two and five cc uh, only in single uh, package in this case. Porous chips have instead a completely different shape. They are irregular and their structure is more similar uh, to cancellous bone, to natural cancellous bone, 
they can be easily mixed with biological fluid, uh, fluids or autologous grafts. Uh, porous chips are again available in a granulometry of uh, 500, uh, 1000 microns uh, with a volume uh, of 0.5 and 1 cc in single or multiple packaging of six vial box. Uh, the granulometry one to two millimeter is also available uh, in um, a so-called um, filter cap syringe is a, a specific, a specific, sorry, is a um, specific, um, sorry, uh, I move forward, is also a, is also available in, um, in so-called filter cap syringe, that is a um, specific curved syringe that allow the rehydration of this uh, material, of these uh, chips uh, directly inside the syringes. And I have a very, very short video to present you in which you can see how it works. So give me one second to start the video. Here we are. You see you have the 0.5 cc of material. You remove the cap and you pull forward of the syringe. You move a bit uh, uh, forward and backward the, the piston in order to, to mix the content of the syringe with biological fluids that can be uh, blood of the patient, but also PRP or cell concentrate in some case. Then you, with the same cap, you screw and remove the filter. And after some minutes, you wait for the complete cloctation of the material. You are able to, to deliver directly through the syringe in the implantation site, your, your mixture, your chips, uh, rehydrated or mixed with the uh, biological fluid of the patient. Let me go back to the presentation. Okay. And this uh, format is available only in 0.5 cc, but again, we have uh, single packs of uh, uh, free syringes in one box. Uh, we also have uh, the, the injectable paste uh, formulation due to its similarity to the natural bone mineral component, it is able to form uh, chemical links uh, with the, the host tissue. And it has a very good uh, consistency and uh, adhesiveness, uh, very high cohesion strength between the nanocrystal and, power, and powder uh, with good resistance to wash out. Um, we have many different volume from very small ones, 0.25, a CC till to one CC again in one of three syringes uh, packages. And finally, we have the, the crunch format that is the injectable paste with the addition of uh, uh, microgranule. It has a, a higher concentration of hydroxypatite than the injectable paste, and it is extremely malleable. Um, it is also the most concentrated uh, hydroxypatite formulation, and therefore the cohesive strength is a bit lower than uh, the paste, and it is recommended to dry uh, the implantation site uh, with a gauze uh, before its placement in order to avoid the dispersion or to make it more difficult to maintain in place. Speaking about uh, the, uh, the indication, for granules and chips, uh, of course, the filling of small and medium uh, uh, size defect, per implant and post extractive defects, uh, small and large maxillary sinus lifts. Porous chips in filter cap may be useful in case of uh, mixing uh, the graft with autologous biological fluids, as told, and uh, to be used in sinus lift procedure with vestibular access. So it is easier to use material packed in a syringe that we use, of course, the spoon to fulfill the cavity. Uh, regarding the injectable paste, the most important 
uh, indication are the feeling of a small periodontal and peri-implant defects. And of course, the sinus lifts, uh, the sinus lift through uh, transcrestral approach. Uh, for the moldable crunch, again, feeling of periodontal, peri-implant, uh, also post-extractive bone defect. These also indicate, again, for sinus lift with vestibular assex. So lastly, I want to uh, briefly introduce uh, sim membrane line. Uh, the use of the membrane uh, to avoid the interference of non-osteogenic tissue with bone uh, regeneration, as told, is a very important, is a key principle of the GTR procedure. Uh, however, a recent study between 2017 and these last uh, years have shown that uh, the membrane not only has a passive uh, barrier rule, uh, but they are involved in the process of bone regeneration. Especially the, the collagen membrane. In a very nice uh, immunohistochemical study I reported here, a uh, specific a bone marker has been investigated for a month. Do you need to, 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 to say something, John? Uh, no, sorry. 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 Uh, okay, I, I've heard sorry. Some, some, some noise. Um, in a very nice immunohistochemical study, I briefly present here to you, uh, bone marker has been investigated for about uh, a month, week by week. And it is very interesting because in the first week, uh, no bone markers were found at the membrane level, but only uh, at the bottom of the, the bone defect. But uh, from the second week uh, to the end of the study, they also found some uh, bone marker at the main level. Collagen membranes uh, allow for specific cell infiltration, uh, cells like uh, CD68, for example, that are monocyte, uh, uh, um, a cells from our immune system that show the capability to differentiate both uh, in, into osteoblast and also osteoblast. And collagen membrane is then able to mediate and control the release of specific growth factor uh, that lead to bone regeneration and furthermore to bone remodeling. Collagen membrane is a kind of compartment capable of communicating uh, with, with, the bone in a, with the bone formation site. And this is a very, very uh, new discover. Uh, this is the reason because we decided to start it uh, with a collagen membrane because collagen has this very high capability uh, to deal with bone regeneration. And C membrane is exactly a new line of resorbable membrane uh, based on highly purified type 1 atello collagen of equine origin, which is the difference between collagen and atello collagen because uh, we uh, sometimes hear about atello collagen, but uh, uh, not all the people knows about uh, the, the right meaning of atello collagen. It seems something diff different than collagen. Uh, actually, atello collagen, it means that the collagen triple helix has been purified uh, in the periphery, removing some uh, specific telopeptides that can be reactive once implanted. And the atello collagen is just uh, the uh, central portion. Uh, with the triple helix, uh, absolutely non-immunogenic. So it is 100% uh, accepted by uh, our body. Regarding the feature of the uh, sim membrane, it is made of equine type 1 atelocollagen, as told. It is uh, therefore totally safe and biocompatible. It is easy to apply and to adapt to the bone site. Uh, it doesn't need any fixation in place. It is completely absorbed uh, and it guarantees a, a, a period of protection between four to six uh, weeks. The indication of uh, uh, sim membrane are uh, again the protection of, of uh, peri-implant bone defects, the closure of the small laceration of the Snyder membrane in, in case of damage to the Snyder membrane, the restoration of the smaller bone deficiencies, 
uh, socket protection because you know when you have a post extractive socket it is enough to protect uh, the socket with the membrane to allow the formation uh, of new bone and to reduce torsion of the, the bone tissue and of course the coverage of the bone access in sinus lift procedure Uh, we have a quite big product range. Uh, membrane are available again in a single package or in multiple package from six to 10 pieces. Um, we have uh, uh, 15 by 20 uh, millimeter size. We also have 20 by 20, 25 by 25, uh, 20 by 30 and 30 by 40 in order to offer uh, the most uh, uh, suitable dimension uh, depending on the indication and the size of the defect. We also have uh, another, uh, another kind of membrane, another uh, type of membrane. We named it uh, C membrane RS. RS stays for a rough side. Unlike the other membrane of the line, this membrane presents a smooth surface and a rough surface with uh, less compact fibers. And uh, it offers, of course, a larger contact surface area for uh, cells activity. One position with the rough side towards uh, the bone, towards the, uh, the bone graft, this membrane can guarantee a greater stability and even more favorable environment for cell migration and cell activity. Uh, because it offers a, a more thicker structure for uh, bone regrowth. This uh, uh, rough side membrane is available only in a single pack, in single packaging. But again, we offer uh, four different size from uh, 20 by 20 to 30 by 40. Some, some uh, information regarding the instruction for use. Uh, it is very important to prepare the implant site by removing any residual uh, fibrous tissue. This is because you can have some fibrotic tissue formation if you leave some cells or some amount of uh, fibrotic tissue in the bottom of the bone defect. If necessary, make a few small perforation to encourage the bleeding of the bone bed. It is very important because as I show you, uh, vascularization, so the presence of vascularity and blood is a very fundamental for bone regeneration. Fill the defect with the granular bone substitute or bone paste, it depends on the size of the, dict on the defect and uh, uh, on the choice of the doctor, taking care to fill the space properly Avoiding excessive granules compression. This is very important because if you press too much or if you make a um, too compression on the granule, you can close some porosity or you can impair uh, the bone in growth at the early stages. Uh, sea membrane can be cut as needed and please do it before a rehydration because it is very easier uh, to manage. Uh, it lightly with saline or with uh, some uh, uh, drop of blood of the patient and place it directly or place it directly without any hydration. Uh, the collagen fiber of its structure uh, are very adhesive, so uh, it naturally adheres to the bone surface, ensuring a very good protection of the implantation site. Uh, please uh, uh, perform a complete closure of the flaps without creating tension. Um, this uh, biological membrane, in case of exposure, can protect for a while the implantation site. This is very important and this is a very big difference uh, compared natural membrane, biological membrane to synthetic membrane. If you have an exposure with a synthetic membrane, you know you have uh, with a rate of 99% or 100% uh, an infection on your implantation site. In the first weeks, if you have uh, an opening of the flap with a biological membrane, uh, it can protect the implantation site. And uh, of course, uh, we need to, to completely close the flap anyway, because uh, uh, it is better to protect the membrane. 
so finally, to, to close my, my presentation, I want to summarize uh, the most important features of uh, our line of bone substitute and membrane with some important take home messages. Regarding the C-bone, you have to remain that we are speaking about uh, nanostructure, biomimetic hydroxyapatite, that is a total biocompatible material that it presents a very high surface volume ratio due to its very uh, small uh, crystal structure. Uh, it promotes a very rapid bone regeneration and a early vascularization thanks to its osteoconductive and osteostimic property. This is a very, very fundamental point when we speak uh, to doctor. We don't have only a passive structure that supports bone growth, but we have a material that due to its composition and this three-dimensional three structure is able to actively stimulate the bone formation because uh, as we can see, it promotes the absorption for example, of protein and the addition of osteoblast. It is completely degraded by osteoclast and remodeled into patient on new vital bone. This is very important and I forgot to, to mention some information uh, comparing this hydroxyapatite with the normal hydroxyapatite on the market. Uh, this hydroxyapatite is able to be completely degradable by osteoclast activity. And this is again due to its uh, crystalline structure because this small structure, uh, the, uh, the osteoclasts are able to completely attach to the surface of this hydroxyapatite and therefore they are able to, to digest in a very physiological way. Uh, but when we implant some uh, normal hydroxyapatite, we have a very, very big crystal that form this uh, hydroxypatite and osteoclast are impaired to completely adhere on surface. And so they are just able to resorb some percentage of the material that uh, in, a bigger, in, a, in a big part stays longer than 10 years or forever. So this is a very fundamental difference between nanostructure biomimetic hydroxypatite and calcinated material or a normal hydroxypatite you may find on the market. It is uh, again, Fabrizio, yeah. Fabrizio. Um, uh, I've got a couple of questions for you before we go to, uh, too far. Yeah. Um, uh, does moldable crunch need a membrane fixation and covering? Is this kind of graft resorbable? Yeah, all, all the, the line of our product uh, are, are, are resorbable. And the, the crunch has a different formulation, but it is always formed by uh, micro aggregates. So powders and microgranules and some bigger granules of the same hydroxypatite. So formulation is always the same, is the consistencies of the material to change. Uh, crunch is uh, malleable, so you can more easy model it and it is resorbable. And again, it needs to be protected uh, by a membrane like the other uh, format available. So there's no difference in the procedure to use it. Okay. Does the membrane uh, tolerate some uncovering? Yeah, as I told you, it, it can happen that sometimes the flap reopen. And in this case, especially if uh, it happens in uh, the very early phase, uh, I mean, one or two weeks after implantation, membrane is able to protect uh, bone graft. Uh, collagen allows for a migration of soft tissue cells on its surface. So you usually can observe a completely closure of the, um, of the soft tissue, avoiding any, any infection. If you have a, a, a reopening uh, later on, I mean, in the third, four weeks, uh, it can be uh, pretty dangerous because the membrane already started to, uh, to lose a bit its uh, protection and you can have some infiltration of bacteria that can cause infection in the bone site. Um, is it enough four weeks for bone formation protection? Uh, very, very good question. Uh, it depends on bone defect. Uh, for sure, uh, this membrane represents a, a basic, basic material for bone regeneration. Uh, it is a material we do need to have because uh, I would say, 60% uh, of GBR protection just need uh, a very simple membrane 
depending on the, the size of the bone defect to protect. As you saw, um, collagen membrane has a very high capability uh, to deal with bone regeneration because they are, um, you say, uh, integrated with some, with some uh, components uh, from the, the, the bone implantation site. They can react and they can mediate some activity. But of course, in presence of a bigger uh, bone defect, uh, one month and a half is not in, uh, enough protection. So it is uh, uh, just recommended for a small defect or normal defect regeneration. Uh, I would say that uh, for bone formation process, uh, just the first two, three weeks are crucial in the bone um, formation uh, healing process, because uh, you have to consider that uh, after 72 hours after implantation, uh, you also assist to the formation of a fibrin cloth. So you have a kind of natural stabilization of your graft and uh, immediately uh, after the implantation, say a few hours after, you have already started uh, an ingrow of the vessels. So you have already started your bone regeneration. So I would say that for a medium size, a small size bone defect, one month protection is very enough to have a very good sure. bone regeneration. And um, uh, talking about the equine type, I guess, uh, collagen uh, membranes, uh, is, uh, the question is, is it from the Achilles tendon? Uh, yeah, it, it doesn't matter actually, but 90% uh, of the collagen available market from equine origin is uh, taken from Achilles tendons, from tendons, generally speaking. Okay, that's about it from, for questions for right now. I let you continue. Okay, and... Uh, <clears throat> To, to, to finish the, the take on messages regarding Sibon, as told, it is available in granules, chips, pasta, and crunches to make easier different uses. Uh, porous chips as, are, are also available in uh, filter cap syringes. That is a very useful uh, for, um, presentation and is uh, pretty unique because at the moment there's no any other um, synthetic material uh, packed inside this. Uh, uh, nice syringes, and of course we offer a convenient multiple pack. Regarding sea membranes, it is very important again to remember we are speaking about highly purified collagen or atelocollagen. Again, it is uh, absolutely biocompatible and unreactive. Uh, it offers protection, but also a very good active osteostimulation of the implantation site. It, it's very easy to apply and to adapt to the site. You can cut with shish soap before rehydration, of course. It is a naturally adhesive and it does not require any kind of fixation. And again, it is completely absorbable, uh, offering four to six weeks of protection. Uh, to, to, be, to be more clear, it doesn't mean that it completely disappears in one month uh, and a half but uh, is no more completely occlusive due to the activity of the collagenases that start digesting this material. So we can guarantee a good protection for about one month and a uh, half. But if you make an histology or if you have uh, uh, by chance the, the, the opportunity uh, to, to give a look after a couple of months of implantation, you still find some residue of the membrane because uh, to be completely resorbed, it takes longer than uh, six weeks. Uh, we also have the RS version, so the right side version, that is, uh, again, something uh, pretty original uh, for uh, offering a greater stability and a better dimensional environment for cell activity. And uh, again, we have a wide range of size and convenient multiple pack. Um, I have another question. Yeah. Does the HA resorb fully? Uh, yes, yes. As I told, it is completely, uh, completely resorbed. Okay. All right. I'll let you continue. Yeah, I think I finished. So I'm available if you have uh, some some question or or some point to discuss. Okay. Or something. Uh, 
Any open questions? Um, so I, uh, I want to repeat uh, that uh, now that you've had your presentation, several of you have already made your appointments. Several of you have already had your meetings. Uh, you're welcome to make uh, new ones, additional ones. For those that have not made your meeting concerning the, the start packages, uh, please, by Monday, indicate the best times oh. from now until the 9th of February when you are available to, uh, uh, to talk about, um, about your plans and um, to go over the starter packages and the adjustments of the starter packages to fit, uh, to fit your, uh, your needs. Um, other than that, Alice, am I forgetting any last points? No, 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 no. Okay. no, I think there is uh, nothing. I want to, I want to, Fabrizio, um, it's always a pleasure to listen to your presentations. It's every, every time clear and concise with, uh, with, uh, with clear indications. Thank you so much for, for offering us your, uh, your, your Saturday morning. Uh, for everybody else, thanks for, for attending. Alice, Silvia, thank you so much for organizing um, uh, this event. And um, I hope to hear from, from everybody next week. Have a great weekend. Okay. Thank you very much. Ciao, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Ciao. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.